Welcome to CSE 143, Intro to Data Structures, where you're using the Building Java Programs version 4 textbook, and we're using Practice-It here to show you the exercises, and this problem is uh, to show you exercise 9.9, .9, min-max account. And to remind you where we are in the book, chapter 9 is about classes and inheritance, and this particular problem is not only about inheritance, it's also about overloading. This is a challenging problem that a lot of uh, students have troubles with, so uh, I, you shouldn't feel bad that you had some difficulties with it. I will warn you up front that I'm not going to give you the answer to how to do this problem, but I will go over it in detail. I will show you pseudocode for what you need to do, and hopefully help you to figure out these kind of problems in the future yourself. So, what have they given us? Uh, they've given us a class banking account. Um, now, these types of problems are difficult for students because they don't show you the full code, and a lot of students don't really understand it unless they see all the code. But this is an important point that object-oriented programming is about not having to know all the code. It's actually a huge benefit to not have to know all the code for a class such as banking account, but instead just be able to know the interface of that class and then use it as a client without ever having to see the code. Okay, It's a very important point that in, in Java and in object-oriented programming we don't want to know how they wrote this. We just want to know the interface. So the interface they tell us is they give us a constructor that takes a startup uh, uh, object and this confuses a lot of students because they say well what's a startup object? I don't know what a startup object is and then from there they can't even begin. So relax. The point of these questions is to show you that you don't need to know what a startup object is, okay? You are going to be inheriting and subclassing and overriding uh, an existing account, okay? So you don't have to know anything about a startup object. You just have to be able to take it and pass it through, okay, as a subclass. Uh, we'll show you a little bit more about that. We know that there is a debit and a credit function and a get balance. And just like in any bank account that you've worked with, you probably understand that for a bank account that you, you should be able to uh, create uh, credits. So whenever you get a paycheck, you want to credit the account. Okay, When you go to the grocery store or the gas store, you want to be able to debit money from that account. And of course, you want to be able to get the balance at any time. Okay? The only confusing thing here is the startup S. But you can imagine that if this were used in a bank, that startup S object probably has your name, an account number, all of your personal ID information, okay? But you don't need to know any of that information, okay? All you need to know is that there is a banking account and that there are startup objects, okay? And you'll just pass it through. So design a new class, min-max account, whose instances can be used in place of a banking account object. That right there should tell you that min-max account has to be a subclass of banking account. And that will, should lead you to this definition here, public class min-max account extends banking account, okay? Because only the only way you can use an object in place of another object is if it's a subclass of that object. If that's confusing to you, please review my videos on section 9.1. Okay, there's going to be new behavior to remember the minimum and the maximum balances ever recorded, and you should provide these methods. So we have to provide a get min and a get max function that a client can call. Um, it's going to take the same constructor with the startup s, okay? So let's start working on this. So um, just in general, okay, your all classes you're going to have member variables. It's going to have constructors and it's going to have uh, probably uh, getters and setters. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about the constructor because they give you the constructor right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that in here as the constructor. And then one of the things you should remember from my previous videos about uh, working with your superclass is that, so this is a subclass. The superclass is the banking account object. And whenever you have a subclass, you want to call the superclasses constructor. So how do we call the superclasses constructor? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> You're going to have to look up that video or look in the book to understand how to do that. But it's very simple. It uses a new keyword introduced in the chapter. 
So we have to call that superclass constructor. Then after that, you would typically then work on uh, initializing your member variables. And when I say the member variables, I mean the new ones that you would add here. Okay, so we haven't yet talked about what those things are. Let's go and take a look at the uh, the getters and the setters. So we know that we have to implement a get min. And we know we have to implement a get max. And this will help us figure out what our member variables are going to be. Okay, so the minimum needs to return okay, the minimum amount in pennies. And the get maximum needs to return maximum amount in pennies. Okay, so think about that. We have to track uh, what is this, the, the, the usage of this class going to be like? Well, we know from the description of banking account up above that what's going to happen is it's the, the account will be created. Okay, so that's this, this uh, right here. It'll call the super class constructor and then initialize some member variables. And then after that, there's going to be a debit method and a credit method called an, and get balance. Okay, now it hasn't asked us to override the debit, the credit, or the get balance. And we don't, we are not required by Java to actually list them here. Okay, it just assumes that if we didn't list it, then those are going to be called, we just, pa it'll just be passed through uh, directly. But we might still want to take a look at those, okay? Because we, let's go ahead and put those uh, members in here. So we can go ahead and, uh, let's see, debit and credit. I'm going to list those uh, separately as methods. Getters and setters are, are technically methods too, but um, the, these are more what I would call mutators. It's another term that we use. So we can put debit here and we can put credit here. And just for completion's sake, I'll put get balance here as well under the getters and setters because it is a, it is a getter. Okay. Now, um, so whenever somebody has this bank account and they call debit or credit, we now have access to that function. Okay. So when they credit an amount, we can now get the, um, we can get a hold of that transaction. Okay. Um, and so there's a credit, there's uh, also, I'd never mentioned, so the parameters here, there's a credit object and a debit object e again. And you might be thinking, well, I'm confused because I don't know what a credit object is or I don't know what a debit object is. And the point is, you don't need to know, okay? You don't need to know. What you do have access to is, let's just list here, that we know that there is a um, get balance function right there. There's the get balance, okay? And we, we listed it down here, get balance. So we know that if we call the super classes get balance, um, it will return the current balance. And um, I'll list that here just for completion's sake. And for the get balance here, what we could do is we can just call the super get balance to pass through. But really, we don't want to actually modify how get balance is implemented. So it, you can imagine in a different problem, they might want us to modify get balance so that whenever the balance was zero, we sent an email to the client saying, hey, you've run out of money or something like that. But we don't actually don't. So I'm actually going to going to go ahead and comment this whole thing out because we don't actually want it to do anything okay but what, what we're going to do is when we make a credit we want to actually uh, first call the super credit function okay because we do want to credit the account with whatever amount 
uh, that they that they bring credit. So they receive their paycheck for three three dollars. Okay. So we want to make sure that we call the super accounts, the banking accounts credit function to apply that. Then we can check the balance. Uh, we can say call get balance to um well it's kind of obvious to get and to get the balance and if uh we, we can uh we can uh how to phrase this we can check uh we can reset uh we can um uh replace min or max if needed okay so um i'm going to get rid of this line here because it's done by this line. You might ask which get balance? Is it is it my local min max account get balance or is it the super's min uh, uh, banking accounts get balance? And the answer is that if you call get balance, the first thing Java is going to do is look in min max account to see if you implemented get balance. Okay? Because I commented it out here, we didn't implement it. It's going to go to the super account to, to the super class and call get balance there. So you can either call it directly here, or you can actually use the Java format t to specify the super classes get balance. It doesn't matter. Um, and I'm not going to tell you how to do this, but you have to replace the minimum and you have to replace the maximum if needed. So the, what's that going to look like? You're going to have to get the balance, and then you're going to have to do some processing based on what your minimum and your, your maximum currently are. Oh, hey, we don't actually have a minimum maximum, right? So that's a good idea store the minimum and the maximum, okay? So we need to create member variables for the minimum and maximum here. And what should those minimum... Min the minimum is probably going to be uh, zero, right? And the maximum is going to be zero, again, because we're just starting up an account. So when we initialize, we want those to be zero, okay? Uh, by the way, I've noticed some students trying to do initializations in the member variables. That's what you would do for a static class, not for a real uh, Java and class with inheritance and everything, a non-static class. Okay, so that's for credit. For debit, we want to do the same thing here. Um, so let's try doing the same thing. We, we'd call the supers debit function. Okay, but there's a subtle bug here. So if I do the same order as I did down here, so, uh, oops, that's misspelled. So debiting. So let's say it starts out with $20 in the account, and there's a debit for $20. Okay. So we want it. Uh, we want the to get the debit uh, after. No, actually, there's no bug there. I was thinking we needed to change the order, but it's the same thing. We, in both cases, we want to we want to look at the balance after we call the debit or the credit. If we looked at the balance beforehand, then that would be not the minimum or the maximum. Okay. Um, so if these two lines here check the minimum, maximum, and reset them to be whatever it needs to be if needed. And also, don't forget you've got math class uh, functions available to you to help determine what's the minimum, and the maximum. Then here. All uh, these comments here, the, these are accurate. So we just have to return the min, we have to return the max. And let's think, do we need to have any conversions? Well, assuming these were integers up here, you don't need to do any conversions. If you make them doubles, I don't think there's any reason why you would make them doubles, but you might have to do a conversion. But that is the pseudocode for how you're going to solve this problem. Okay. And again, we never had to figure out what is a startup object or what's in the startup object. Or what are the methods on a startup object? Okay, all we had to do is pass them through to the superclass constructor. Okay, but it's important that you remember you have to call the superclass constructor, and generally, whenever you are overwriting a function, you really want to call that superclass's function because the superclass knows how to do the work. So unless you're completely replacing how the superclass is going to do its work, you want to call the superclass and then do something either before or after it, okay? Um, this would be a bad idea for a bank account, but let's suppose that you wanted to change, uh, create a new type of bank account where you could never, you could never uh, uh, 
spend money. Okay, that's a really bad bank account. It's a really <laughs> conservative bank account. But what you would do then is whenever someone tries to uh, debit, you would uh, you'd have to call some error message or fail or something like that. So yeah, if in that case you wouldn't call the superclass, but usually always you're going to call the superclass. Okay. So that is the pseudocode on how to do this problem. I always encourage people after you've figured out how to do a problem to read the problem again to make sure that you've actually satisfied the criteria. So we we started out with a banking account class. It's got a constructor with a startup. It's got a debit and a credit and a balance. We're going to create a new class, min-max account, that's going to be a subclass of that. And so our subclass is going to have, a, their constructor is going to be called, there's going to be your debits and credits and what we're going to do is now whenever there's a debit or a credit we're going to actually look and see what is the minimum and what's the maximum balance this account has ever seen and remember we're going to initialize the minimum and maximum in the min max account so we're going to keep those minimums and maximums as member variables and then whenever the user calls get min or get max then we can provide that and um so that's that's all there is for this uh, problem. But I would also recommend, even if you're not doing it, I would recommend you look at the video for exercise 9.11 because I actually went through the effort of creating a bunch of stub code for the other types of classes and a client class as well so that you can help visualize how these objects are being used. Um, and also how do you can use instance of because these, these two functions here, get min and get max, these cannot be called on the client uh, on the super class banking account. They don't exist. So you need to use instance of on a variable to figure out whether a banking account is really a banking account or is it a min max account. If it's a min max account using instance of, then you can call these functions get min get max. So I didn't give you the full answer, but I gave you the pseudocode you should be able to write the full answer from. You're going to have to look up a few things here. If you have found this video useful, please like and subscribe, and you'll get notifications for all the other problems and uh, lectures for other chapters as well.